<laughs> You're not recording? No. no. Um, all right. Am I supposed to put my ears on? No, it no, doesn't matter. No, you can't. Can yeah. Can you tell I'm nervous? I'm to my turn. Oh my God, wait. Tell okay. Us shut up. Boys, I am sweating, not just because it's 90 degrees and 100% humidity in New Orleans right now, but because of microcompact fever. It arguably started with the Keltec P11, that is one inch thick guns with sub four inch tall frames, capacities of 10 rounds or more, double stack magazines. It really started piling on again after the introduction of the Sig P365. You saw the Hellcat after that, and now you got a small litter of micro compacts, including options from Ruger, Smith & Wesson, and even more on the way. Hint, hint. With guns packing double digit capacities and double stack magazines with nearly single stack size frames, it raises the question, is the single stack now obsolete? What about the traditional subcompact double stack, like the Glock 26, for example, or the MNP 2.0 subcompact? Are they obsolete? That's what we want to find out in today's video. You guys remember when I first got my hands on the Shield Plus. I did a review of it a few weeks back. Fantastic pistol. In my opinion, one of Smith's best auto loaders. One of the best ones they've ever made. It's revolutionary. And the regular non-plus Smith & Wesson Shield was perhaps one of their most popular guns of all time. Inexpensive, thin, reliable, lightweight, and inexpensive. Did I say that already? And as I showed you guys just a few weeks ago, the Shield Plus has the same width slide as the single stack shield, a grip that's hardly thicker, just barely, not even noticeable, but the gun also holds three more rounds. And somehow the Shield Plus weighs less than the regular smaller shield. So with that type of potential, should manufacturers even be looking at single stack 9mm anymore? To find out, we set up a little experiment. First, we needed the guns, and then we needed shooters to test it out. For guns, Smith & Wesson was the obvious choice for this because they basically make the exact same gun in the three sizes we're looking at. Single stack, micro compact, and subcompact sizes. The Shield, of course, is a single stack with an eight round capacity. The Shield Plus has an 11 round flush fit capacity, and the M&P 2.0 subcompact has a 13 round flush fit capacity. Therefore, it just made the most sense to use these three nearly identical models for this comparison because there was no one else out there that offered three guns that are basically the same thing with only a minor format difference. As I said, the Shield and the Shield Plus are nearly identical. The Plus is only wider in the grip and it's hardly noticeable. The Plus somehow weighs 20.1 ounces, while the regular lower capacity Shield is 20.3 ounces. Go figure, both guns are about an inch thick. The M&P 2.0 subcompact holds 13 total rounds with a flush fit magazine, but you pay the price with extra weight and extra thickness. It's noticeably thicker at right around an inch and a half, and the M&P 2.0 subcompact weighs 25 ounces, a quarter pounder heavier than the Shields. She's heavy, she's thick, and I'm talking about quarter pounders. Sounds like my last date with your mom. Speaking of your mom, they do make an easy version, but I won't touch it on camera because it's too ugly. So now that we have essentially three of the exact same gun in the three different sizes that exactly we wanted to test to find out which one made the most sense to own, we needed a pool of shooters to test them out. We went to the St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center and we bribed eight contestants with pizza, 50 bucks each, and I told them that I would buy the guns that we use in the video and I would give them to randomly selected shooters in the group. So in total, we got 10 shooters, if you include myself and Ryan. So I set the guns up at the seven yard line using NRA rifle targets just like this one. Each person had seven seconds to shoot seven rounds at seven yards with each of the three guns. They also had to chamber a round first because I wanted ease of manipulation under stress to be a factor in this test. 
every shooter started with a different gun to minimize variables caused by a shooter possibly like warming up with one gun and, and everyone moving to the same gun at the same time after they've warmed up. And to those ends, I also gave all the shooters the ability to warm up, dry fire, shoot if they needed to. All three of these guns were brand new from the factory. We then took all of the scores from all the targets and we averaged them to see which gun shot best across the group. We'll get to that in just a second. We also asked the competitors two questions at the end. Which one did you shoot the best and which one would you choose to carry? One was objective, one was subjective. We asked them for their comments and this is what we got. Uh, my name's Jordan. Uh, I work at St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. I've been shooting for about five or six years now. Practice for self-defense, just make, trying to make sure my groups are okay, uh, they're consistent, and just working out any kind of bugs or anything I need to work on pretty much. So it looks like the one I shot the best was the Shield Plus. Um, it, for whatever reason, it, it was comfortable, it was easy to sight back in on. Um, overall, it was super smooth. I am Kelsey, I work at St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center, and I've been shooting my entire life but um, handguns for the past two years-ish, so. How are you gonna do today? Hopefully better than I did when I first started working here. Well, let's see. Well, let's, see. Well, let's find out. I shot the shield the best, 100%. And I like that one the best. I'm better with it. Feels better, yeah, it feels better in my hands because I have smaller hands, so. Um, yeah, that's and the only reason you know, why the I could shield, The Shield Plus is, it's larger, than the regular shield, slightly, it's slightly fatter in the grip. Do you think mm -hmm. that affected? The probably, shield? probably. Because I like the, the skinniness of the grip on the regular shield. 100%, it's a lot easier. It wraps, my hand wraps around it more, I have more control with it, so. Nice. My name is Luke Mazur, I work at St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center, and I served four years in the Marine Corps. I'd say the one that I did the best with would be the Shield Plus. And which one did you like the most and why? Oh, once again, the Shield Plus, because I shot best with it. <laughs> Honestly. And which one would you carry? I mean, because you got to bear in mind, the subcompact is a 12 round flush fit, the Shield Plus is a 10 round flush fit, but it's smaller. Which one would you carry? Why? I'm going to carry the one with the more rounds in it, to be honest. Why? Well, why? Just, I want to just be able to have more rounds. I don't like the idea of like running out of rounds and having to reload if I can just solve the problem with what I have in the magazine. That seems like the best option. I'm uh, Sam. I, uh, I'm the general manager here at the uh, St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. Uh, I also uh, run uh, Alchemy Rex Engraving, a laser engraving company. Been shooting pretty much all my life. I uh, got my first 22 when I was about four years old, and I've uh, been shooting ever since. Comfortable to shoot. The, uh, the subcompact kind of fills my hand a little bit better. However, that pinky does hang off the bottom, so there is that. Uh, the Shield Plus was very comfortable. Uh, I like the extra capacity. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, that's probably the one that I would carry would be the Shield Plus. My name's Thomas. I shoot at St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. I've been shooting since I was about 10. A little bit of NRA CMP match rifle and uh, handgun shooting for, uh, for fun. Which one did you shoot the best? Shot the Shield Plus the best. And which one did you like the best and why? Uh, Shield Plus was definitely the most comfortable shoot. Uh, filled up my hand a little better in the Shield, but had a longer grip than the subcompact. Which one would you carry and why? I think I'd carry the Shield Plus. It's a little skinnier, so it'll conceal better on my morning walks with Christian. My name's Christian. I work at St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. I've been here for about a year. Shooting experience, I was in the Marine Corps for four years, and I also shot a little bit of USPSA shooting. I personally think I shot the Shield Plus the best. Do you personally believe that, or do you actually do the math that we asked you to? The math. So two of them were the same, but the Shield Plus definitely felt more comfortable, and the grouping's a little tighter. Which one did you like best and why? The Shield Plus, definitely. It's uh, the most comfortable in my hand, and definitely the trigger out of all of them, it's my favorite. And which one would you carry out of the three? I think I know where this is going. Definitely the Shield Plus, for sure. My name's AJ. I've been at St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center for about a year now. Um, former Navy. Uh, out of the three, the one I shot the best was probably the subcompact M&P9. Uh, like the best was probably the Shield Plus, the trigger. Um, carrying, I would probably go with the Shield Plus, carrying. Why the Shield Plus? I mean, like, you, you like the performance best out of that one? The performance, the capacity, the 10 and 13 rounds, um, single stack, um, and I'm just an uh, M&P fan okay. for a long time, so. Uh, Brandon LaBeouf, I own St. Bernard Indoor Shooting Center. Been shooting for about the last probably 25 years or so, Marine Corps, law enforcement. Do a little bit of training nationally, stuff like that. So I shot the two shields better than the compact, and that's kind of consistent with 
Uh, I have smaller hands, so like I can shoot a Glock 19 well, but I shoot a 48, 43 better. Um, it just fits my hand better. I really don't like the whole not being able to get my pinky around the thing, but um, I was apparently able to make do with it. Look at this. Brandon with the shield. Shield plus. He only had two outside of the 10 ring, so that's a 68. And then with the subcompact. I liked them. I really didn't notice anything in, in shooting seven rounds between the two shields, uh, other than uh, the plus was grippier is i believe the technical term um i like them i mean it's really i definitely would want to you know get a little more time shooting i mean which one would you carry out of the three of those then unless i had a need for the uh, the additional slimness i would value the extra rounds more in the subcompact so i would just i mean it wasn't horrible i shot the same technical score with the two i just like the groups better with the shields um i would make do with the subcompact but i certainly wouldn't feel undergunned from a performance standpoint with any of them. So as you can see, most people opted for, you guessed it, the Shield Plus. While it's true that most people shot the Shield Plus the best as well, the margin of the scores was way closer than you might think. Since we had 10 shooters shooting three guns, we had 30 scores. I eliminated any scores of 21 or lower that threw off the average too much. And that was only five of the total scores out of the 30. So we averaged 25 scores. The average score for the Smith & Wesson Shield 2.0, the single stack, was a 51.9. The average score for the M&P 2.0 subcompact was a 54.7. And the average score for the Shield Plus was a 57. And it's funny, I just noticed I'm sitting here waving around the Shield Plus this entire time for the beginning of this video. That was actually the Shield 2.0. Now I've got the Shield Plus. I mean, they're that similar that if you're not paying attention or if you're not looking at the trigger, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference. But I have to say, I'm not too surprised with these results. I would bet that the edge the Shield Plus has is, in my opinion, it's much better flat trigger that we were just talking about. It's much better than, I think, the hinge trigger that you have on the subcompact or the original Shield. And while shooters with smaller hands like Kelsey actually shot the original shield much better, I think that most of the guys shooting this needed a little bit more to grip on. And I'm sorry to throw poor Kelsey under the bus, but while she notched an outstanding 53 out of 70 with the standard shield, she only got a 14 with the plus and a 10 with the subcompact. But we're still proud of her in the fact that she scored 53, which is higher than the group average of 51. So the point is, it seems like for at least one shooter, the grip circumference actually made a huge difference in performance. In a weird way, I'm actually a little disappointed. I wanted to see a bigger disparity. Yes, while the Shield Plus was about 10% better performing than the standard Shield, I thought it was going to be even better than that because in my opinion it's got the best ergonomics of the group i like the way the palm swell feels on the shield plus and it's also just got a better trigger the simple fact of the matter is they all shot really freaking well but let's talk about what the shooter's opinions were the subjective and it was clearly skewed towards the shield plus the only shooter that preferred the shield was you guessed it kelsey and it makes the most sense for her because she shot it the best. But I think everyone recognized that the Shield Plus is probably the best pick out of the three guns because it's basically the size and the weight of the Shield, but it's got a better trigger, it's got a better grip, and you got a three round advantage on the Shield. As you saw, there were a couple of guys that said that they preferred the subcompact even if they shot the plus the best because they like that additional capacity and that's more important to them. A sensible enough reason, right? And for that matter, I think that's why double stacked subcompacts aren't going anywhere. One huge advantage of these guns is the fact that they can also accept full size magazines from their big brothers, like say adding a 17 round M&P magazine in the subcompact. It just makes sense to keep the double stack subcompact traditional gun as an option, especially for guys who don't mind a few more ounces of weight and a few more tenths of an inch of thickness to get a little bit more capacity. But is the single stack obsolete in view of micro compacts? My conclusion would be, not totally. But the way I see it, there are still police officers in the French Quarter who patrol on horses because it makes the most sense for them in that narrow situation. For everything else, a squad car just makes more sense. 
and I think that's kind of where we're going with single stack 9mm. But as far as single stack guns that are around 4 inches tall and around 1 inch wide and around 20 ounces or less in weight like say the Shield 2.0, it really seems like the micro compacts are edging them out or at least have the potential to as Smith & Wesson demonstrated with the Shield Plus and as we showed you in this video today. Thanks a ton for watching guys. We really do appreciate it around here. We also appreciate our sponsors Ventura Munitions and your online shooting superstore Top Gun Supply. But we're just happy you're watching. Take care.